Hi everyone, I was actually hoping to film a book haul video today because I have something pretty cool to show you soon, but also a package I was waiting for hasn't arrived yet, so I'm gonna wait and hopefully that will turn up soon. And instead today what I want to do is a little bit of a remake of my first ever video because I think I did have a cool idea and that video is still up if you want to go find it, although I would not recommend it particularly. But what I want to do today is talk about book series that I would be afraid to reread. So what this is going to be is mostly me talking about the series that I really loved in between the age of about 8 to 15. These are series that I loved when I was a kid and was really into, but whether or not they're still good, I just am afraid to see what I think of them today, so I would just be afraid to ever go back and reread those series. Okay, so one of the first fantasy series that I ever got into was The Belgariad by David Eddings. This is a really classic fantasy series. It is about a prophecy and a young farm boy with a destiny who sets off on a quest. There is a band of lovable companions. Most of them have a lot of wisecracks and, you know, different personality quirks. And I really love this series. I think there are five or six in the series. It's pretty short. I read them all at once. They've been out for quite a long time already when I was younger. There was a lot of adventure and gods and high stakes and all sorts of things that I really loved. There were knights. There were different fantasy settings. Honestly, this is probably one of the series that could have inspired Diana Wynne Jones's Tough Guide to Fantasyland because I feel like we had sort of the, the Roman imitation setting and probably the desert people and all of those different really cliche fantasy cultures that all show up in the same setting in classic fantasy novels. So I first read The Belgariad when I was around eight and then I went on to read all of David Eddings' other fantasy series. There was the Malorian, which was the sequel series to The Belgariad. There was the Elenium, the Tamuli, and then I think there was one more that he started writing in maybe the 2000s that was absolutely terrible. But even with all the other ones, you know, once I kept reading, even at, at that young age, I could see that every single one of his series followed exactly the same formula. There was always a prophecy and a group of characters, and the characters kind of seemed a lot like each other, even though they had different names and were in mildly different settings. He kind of had a few archetypes that he wrote over and over again. And then there were a few companion novels, which told the backstory of some of the characters. So I don't know, I loved these books so much when I was younger. I also know that I didn't have a lot of taste or a lot of, you know, body of reading behind that. So I don't know what I would think of this series now. I think if I read at least his first series, I might still kind of have a soft spot for it or I might just not like it at all because obviously much better fantasy has been written since then. Another series that I got into in elementary school because I saw some boys in my class reading these books was Dragonlance by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. And it took me a long time to find out that Tracy was a guy, by the way. Not that it really matters, but that was surprising to me as a kid. These books were also some of the earlier fantasy novels that I read, and really my first introduction to anything in a D&D type setting with all the fantasy races with dwarves and halflings and half-elves and different kinds of elves. I had read some Tolkien by then, so it's not like I had never seen any of that before, but this was my first taste of it in that classic D&D sense. I also loved these books as a kid. They were really good adventures. There are so many of them. I actually looked it up in preparation for this video and there were so many more Dragonlance books than I even realized. I definitely only read the ones that were written by the main authors, although because this was designed as a campaign setting, a ton of different authors wrote in this world. Most of it I just never even saw, but I read at least a few trilogies, probably the first few. My favorite books in this whole setting were definitely the ones that were focusing on the twins, Raislin and Karaman Majir. Raislin was the wizard who was kind of dark. And then his twin brother, Caramon, was sort of a more, um, I guess, not bumbling, but very uh, straightforward warrior type character. And they had both this really close relationship and also this really conflicted relationship. I really enjoyed the books about them, especially. In general, though, I, I liked the characters in Dragonlance a lot. I think that's what I remember the most about it now, two decades later. I didn't keep reading these books as I got older. And 
I don't think they're necessarily for kids. It's just something where I'm not sure how I would feel about them now, so I'd almost rather not reread them. But I think that these were a really good introduction to fantasy for me when I was younger, especially because at the point that I was reading them, I was a little too young to really appreciate Tolkien. And I don't know, it was a very accessible way to get into this kind of fantasy. One of the earliest fantasy authors I ever read was Mercedes Lackey and her Valdemar series. This is also a series I was hooked on, especially in elementary school. I probably read it up through middle school. The first book of hers I ever picked up from the library around when I was seven or eight was called The Black Griffin, which is actually part of a prequel trilogy to her main series. And I loved this book so much. I love just the idea of griffins, honestly, and there was a magical war, and it was all very exciting, and there were definitely some adult themes that I really didn't understand, but that's okay. So I quickly got through all of the books in that series that she had published, as well as a few other books she had done in other settings. I think that this is a series that if it was coming out today would probably be geared a little bit young adult, but at the time it often featured teenage protagonists and a coming of age story along with some romance, but there were also themes and things that happened in it that I think are a bit beyond what you typically see in YA literature today. So I don't know, it definitely feels like a category that doesn't quite exist anymore. But the main idea behind her series is that in the kingdom of Valdemar there are these heralds who are, I don't know, they basically uphold justice. Some of them are magic users, others aren't, most of them have some sort of telepathic gift, and they are bonded to these magical white horses called companions that choose them at a certain time and then they go and learn to become heralds and then you know go out and do their thing. I was also into horses as a kid, not extremely. In fact, uh, while I did learn to ride, I think I was always more into the idea of horses than actual living horses, which are a little bit large and scary if I'm gonna be completely honest. So I devoured the Voldemort books. They were some of my favorite I would be so scared to go back and reread these books today because I loved them so much when I was in between the ages of 8 and 12 and I just don't want to spoil that. On the other hand, I actually did read one of her most recent trilogies in that setting. Yeah, I didn't know she was still at it, but she's still writing some Valdemar books, I guess. And a year or two ago, I read a few of the recent ones and I will say they were not as bad as I expected. I actually kind of enjoyed them. So, you know, maybe someday I will go reread some of this stuff, but I kind of don't want to know. Is that weird? Also, I think part of why I stopped reading her books as I got older is there were at least some that I think definitely did decline in quality from the earlier ones, and I lost interest in what she was writing. So, I don't know. This is kind of a series that I'm gonna leave in the 90s. Another author who is definitely still writing and who I read some of around the same age and then just didn't continue with is Terry Brooks. So his Shannara series, I'm sure you guys have heard of it, it's huge. I don't even know how many books he's written in that series and then he tied it into his like urban fantasy series so now it's all part of one big world. And I know he just recently published a book that was described as the last of the Shannara series, but that might have just been the last chronologically, as in he could still go back and fill in with prequels. So I think there were only a few trilogies out at the time when I was reading this series. I would never recommend the Sword of Shannara to anyone, to be honest, because it is so clearly a Lord of the Rings ripoff. He did write it at a time where that was kind of okay. There really wasn't much of a fantasy genre back when he published that book. It was his first book. He hadn't written anything before, and I think the market was just ripe for more things in that vein. And I liked it fine. I liked some of the following books as well. Like most kids, I wasn't particularly picky. It was fantasy. I wanted to read fantasy. I read it. It definitely wasn't a favorite. I think Given that I was a kid that tended to reread and reread most of my books, I don't think I reread a lot of Terry Brooks, but I did read several books into his series, and now there are probably 16 to 30 of them that I just don't remember the titles of and haven't read, so I don't think I'm really going to revisit Shannara. There is just an overwhelming quantity of it, and people do say he gets better, and I think I did get to the point in the series where people say it starts to improve from, so I'm sure there's nothing wrong with him as an author. I think I have a pretty clear picture of why Sword of Shannara isn't the greatest book now, but yeah, I will probably never go back and read Terry Brooks. So moving chronologically, not in terms of book release, but just 
myself and what I was reading as I got older, I did get into the Drist books by R.A. Salvatore. Luckily now on the internet, it's much easier to look up how to pronounce Drist, and I'm still not sure I'm doing it right. I think I just pronounced it two different ways two times in a row. Anyway, these are books in the Forgotten Realms setting. He's still writing them. I think they're still pretty popular. I read maybe the first two trilogies of these, maybe others. I liked the character a lot, the concept of this dark elf who becomes heroic, and he definitely has a lot of adventures because there sure are a lot of those books, and I don't think there was really any reason why I stopped reading them. I think there were a lot of them and I probably just lost motivation, but I think this is another series that probably belongs firmly in my teens. Let me know if I'm wrong about this. If you are reading a lot of fantasy today and you're still reading this series and you still like it, uh, let me know. And I would be willing to maybe consider reading these again. I don't know. I still have a soft spot for Drist or Drist or however the heck you say his name. I think this was also the series where people were constantly dying and coming back to life because the series just kept getting extended and he would just bring back characters. So I think that might be another reason where I just lost patience. And I think I looked at the synopsis of one of the later books and it was like everyone had now been reborn or something like that. So I don't know. I feel like he should just maybe stop killing characters if this is such an issue for him and his plotting. Around the same age for me, so maybe late middle school, early high school, was when I read A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I've mentioned before that this is a series that I am not planning to continue. These books were completely unlike anything I had ever read because they felt very realistic and they were very dark. And there wasn't really a lot of magic in them. It just kind of felt like history, except, you know, in a fantasy world. There was, of course, a little bit of magic, but it was just very different than all this other stuff that I described before, which is a lot of, um, you know, Dungeons and Dragons settings, things like that, or classic fantasy like David Eddings or Terry Brooks, or more escapist secondary world fantasy like the Mercedes Lackey books. This was definitely not escapist in that way. And of course, he's famous for killing off important characters, which I think he honestly did more at the beginning of the series and stopped doing it later on. But from when You Know Who I'm Talking About dies in the first book, it was just, you know, obviously this series was on a very different level. And of course, because I was, you know, 11 or 12, I figured out very quickly that if I wanted to know if a point of view character was dead, all I had to do was flip through the book and see if their point of view came up again later in the book. I didn't even have to read anything. So yeah, I started doing that. I've always been so bad about spoilers. I kind of like spoilers. I've tried to get better about avoiding them now because I can kind of see the value in that, but I'm a very impatient person who likes instant gratification. And when I was a kid, I would, once I started a book, there was always a point where I'd flip to the end and just read the last couple pages so I would know it was coming. I also like to know what's going to happen sometimes if I'm feeling stressed, but basically reading ebooks cured me of that reading ahead thing because it's a little bit harder to do on a Kindle. Anyway, back to A Song of Ice and Fire. I really loved this series when I was at that age. And I had recently read the series, like in the last few years, when A Feast for Crows came out, which was book four. That was the book where he said, oh, this is only half a book because I only could fit half the point of view characters in one book. But don't worry, book five is going to be out next year and that will have the other half of the point of views. And then I think it took, it was at least another six years. I don't remember exactly. A Feast for Crows came out in 2005 and A Dance with Dragons came out. Is it a dance with dragons or a dance of dragons? I don't remember. Anyway, I was I think, well into college by the time that book released. So yeah, and I think people have generally agreed that his earlier books are the better ones in that series. I don't think most people like the most recent two as much as the first three. But the other reason that I'm no longer reading this series is because I think I was just a much less empathetic person person as a 13 year old or 11 year old than I am today. And I find it really hard to read about all those horrible things happening to those characters now. I tried rereading the series once when I was in my 20s and I just, I couldn't. And for the same reason, I didn't watch the TV show when it was airing because I just found it unpleasant to watch some of the things that happened to people in the story. There's one more series that I want to mention as part of this list. And this is actually one that I'm kind of 
potentially interested in rereading. Maybe you guys can weigh in. So this is the series by Robin Hobb. It doesn't really have a name, I don't think. There are individual trilogies and series in it that have their own names. But anyway, the first trilogy is the Assassin's Apprentice. I think it's called the Farseer trilogy. You know, Assassin's Apprentice, Assassin's Quest, Royal Assassin. Hopefully I got those three names right. It has been a lot of years. So again, I read this probably middle school age into high school at the time her first three trilogies in this setting were out and kind of like George R. R. Martin, I think this was a very new kind of fantasy for me at that time. There was writing in first person, which I hadn't seen much in fantasy series and surprised me a lot. It was also a bit darker in theme, although not A Song of Ice and Fire dark and brutal. I would not describe Robin Hobb as grimdark, I don't think, but still it felt very different. It was definitely really different than some of the classic fantasy from the 70s and 80s or earlier that I had read growing up. So I really enjoyed these trilogies, especially I still think, although I don't remember it so well, the Live Ship Traders trilogy, the second one, that is probably, it sticks in my mind as one of the most original fantasy things that I've read. And out of all of it, I would probably be the most interested in revisiting that. But I still see people reading Assassin's Apprentice and overall enjoying it. She's still publishing. I think the main thing that stops me from picking up Robin Hobb again is that it has just been so many years. I haven't read a Robin Hobb book in probably 15 years, and I had already read nine books at that point. So that's just a lot to reread, even if they're not crazy long. And then there's at least two trilogies that she has released in that setting that I have not read. So it's kind of an overwhelming undertaking, especially in rereading such a long series that I have read before. I kind of stopped reading Robin Hobb when she was releasing a trilogy called the Soldier Sun trilogy in the 2000s. She was writing this in between, writing some of her main series books and I just didn't care for it at all. I think I read two out of the three books, but I didn't enjoy it very much, and that kind of killed my interest in Robin Hobb at that time, and so I haven't read anything by her since then. I have never heard anyone on YouTube mention the Soldier Sun trilogy, so I have the feeling it does not have a high place in her works. Anyway, if you have read any Robin Hobb recently and you think I should try rereading her series, let me know. I think the main thing stopping me is just there are so many books in it that I've already read and the thought of rereading nine books before getting to anything new just feels like kind of a lot. But maybe it's been long enough that it would be kind of fresh to me. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. So those are the series that I really loved when I was younger that I think I'd be kind of afraid to reread today or have otherwise decided to stop reading. Thanks so much for watching and let me know if there are any series like this for you. Is there anything you loved when you were younger that you just would be a little bit afraid to pick up today? 